frolicking, frolicking. <laughs> it's called playing and having fun. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see you frolic in the forest, McKenna. Don't lick them. They no, will kill you. I mean with my oh yeah, that was really yeah. funny. That's true. Yeah, they might kill you. Don't lick the mushrooms. They're so pretty. They're kind of slimy and weird. Is that water or mushroom slime? Water. Yes, and you can talk while we film. Oh my god. Look at all the dead branches. I should have brought my harness. Oh, I still have to do that.
flight as well as the West Air flight to end all smoking. This station, we do have two launches from both aircraft. We have one at the front, we have another one located at the back. So let's go make the system of the money if you're new flight and need to find all the controls and the gap you have to be able to get in your armor. I need to bring your headset with you, which I should be coming through the cabin for each of the one of our headsets to purchase. Have you purchased the NATO for today? No, you need to be using credit cards. Hello, and welcome to the Lone Lurch Podcast. <clears throat> I have a cold. I'm Jenny uh, on Instagram and Etsy. You can find me as Lone Larch Designs, and on Ravelry, you can find me as Gentastic. Uh, I have pretty awesome hair today. I'd really rather have these on because it's quite bright out, but I will not have them on for you. I have awesome hair because I just got home from work and so I've had a helmet and a toque on all day. It is a beautiful day here today. Um, we got snow a few days ago, for like three days we got snow. Um, but it's all melting today. See there's some snow right there. Um, but it's gorgeous. Uh, we got done early a little bit today at work. Um, John and I, we took down two spruce trees. So I'm going to record a podcast because I finally have some time to do it. So hi, here I am. Um, this is going to be the craziest, most, um, I don't know, It's it might be a little bit nuts and have no flow to it at all, but we're going to give it a go. Can you see my breath? You can. I'm even still wearing my work shirt that has sawdust all over it. I'm filthy. Whatever. Um, okay, so I went to Knit City. I had an amazing trip. Not only Knit City, but to Vancouver Island and then to Langley to see Kate and it was fantastic. So I'm pretty much going to talk about that the whole time because lots happened. I bought a lot of yarn. Um, I stayed in budget though which is awesome. I even had some money left over to spoil some friends so that was good. What should we start with? Let's start with Ben's house. So I flew from Calgary to Comox and then my brother lives in Courtney. So they picked me up from the airport. The entire family picked me up, which includes Nicole and Ben and five children, picked me up from the airport. And um, they're just fantastic. So we, I don't even know where to start. I had such a good time. Um, I actually had some time to spend with them, which was the whole reason that I went to see them. Because usually when I go to see them, it's for 10 seconds here and there. I'm always on my way from here to there trying to meet this person or I have like three hour window so I'm gonna visit as hard as I possibly can for three hours and then I have to leave but um, this time I got to stay for three days. So we talked and I actually got to talk to my nephews um, and my nieces but uh, it was really cool to talk to them. They're teenagers now and so they're grown up and living their life and are their own little, not little, they're as tall or taller than me, now humans. Um, but I really got to spend some time with them and find out what they enjoy to do. That didn't make any sense. What they enjoy doing. <clears throat> and we just had a really great visit. I'm going to try and block, there we go, the light so it's not all Kevin light coming down on me. Um, but everybody was at school. Ben, uh, my brother, is a teacher, so he was away at school too during the days. 
So Nicole and I got to spend a lot of time together, just her and I and the little girls, um, which I've never really been able to do. So it was really awesome to get to know her uh, more. She's my sister-in-law and they moved to they moved to the island like the day after they got married essentially. So um, I didn't get a lot of time to spend with why Kate why do you text me every single time I'm recording oh my good grief so um, I got to spend some really good time with her and she is a miracle worker she um, is a massage therapist and she does also she's knows all sorts of Chinese medicine she's uh, been trained in those type of things acupuncture and um, use of essential oils and all of these different things so one of the days that I was there she took two hours out of her day and healed me essentially I uh, yeah she did a bunch of acupuncture she released a bunch of uh, issues that I have in my body and um, she's she's an amazing person she has such a healing not only hands and um, training but she just has a healing spirit if you know what I mean she's one of those people that just calms you down and is so good at listening and so energetic but not overly so so that you're like oh my goodness are you can you calm down now no not abrasively <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say and she actually it was funny because she actually said just tell me to stop talking about the oils and stuff if I'm driving you crazy because I know that you're interested in it and she just got back from a conference too so it was all just going through her head right she's just telling me absolutely everything that she knew and I loved it so Nicole don't stop because I appreciate the knowledge and the fact that you want to share it so talk away um, so yeah she did an amazing job of healing me essentially and just getting me to relax it was the perfect start to my vacation um, we went for a frolic in the forest <laughs> it was so much fun um, Doug furs everywhere oh my goodness oh check it out I got a new necklace to work clothes sorry I got a new necklace and it's a tiny little Doug fur cone do you like my nails Emmy did my nails a tiny little Doug fur cone. I love it. So, um, yeah, we frolicked in the forest. There was ferns everywhere and the little girls. I just was playing with them and just so wonderfully relaxed and in my happy place, really. Um, what else did we do? I did a little bit of tree work for my brother because I happened to have my climbing gear there, which was perfect. Uh, I got to clean up their willow a little bit and they have a massive uh, sequoia in the, their front yard so I cleaned it up a little bit I mean I didn't do anything major but I just played in the trees essentially is what I was doing I couldn't help myself what else did we do we ate good food I talked to everybody we just relaxed um, oh and I taught Nicole and Kalea Kalea is six I taught them how to knit and it was awesome Pretty much as soon as I walked in the door, Nicole said, okay, so you have to teach us how to knit. Oh, okay, sure. So <clears throat> we sat down one evening and Kalea, we start, yeah, we, I just taught them how to knit. Started with a knit stitch, cast on obviously first, and then started with a knit stitch and they just went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and Nicole got addicted and she just had to do one more row and she just had to do one more row and then she just had to do one more row. So that was awesome. And Kalea was the same way. Kalea, uh, she was knitting and she's knitting there all quietly. And she just, then she just said, I can't stop myself. I just can't stop myself. And then she went to school the next day and she, she kept asking me, was it in the morning she asked me? I can't remember. Oh yeah, where she was off to school and she asked me, so Auntie Jenny, can, can we do some yarning when I get home from school? <laughs> yes, Kalea, we can absolutely do some yarning. So that's what we ended up calling it the entire time I was there. Can we do some yarning now? Let's go, let's just go do some yarning. So we did and it was fantastic. And so it's no longer called knitting, it's called yarning, thanks to Kalea. The other cool thing is that 
uh, Lucas, my nephew, he's 14. He learned to knit a while ago, a couple of years ago, I think. Um, but as soon as we started knitting in front of him, he just wanted to jump on the bandwagon and knit too. So he was knitting along and he had one of his friends over and his friend kind of looked at him. What are you doing? And Nicole, uh, not Nicole, Lucas is just knitting away and knitting away. And he's like, I'm knitting. And his friend said, you know how to knit? Like looked at him like he was completely crazy. And he just said, yeah. And just kept knitting and kept knitting like, what's the big deal that a 14 year old boy is enjoying knitting? I thought that was so rad. That made me so happy. My nose is running and I'm getting chilly, so I better hurry up. Drink. I just did so much spruce today. I left my water bottle on the side of the fence with the lid part open. So there was all sorts of sawdust getting in there. And so when I went to take a drink, it was like <clears throat> tree, whatever. It's good for you. So I did that. While I was at Ben and Nicole's, I went to Uptown Yarns and I may have bought some yarn. I got some sweater maker. Shocker, right? Sweater maker. I'm going to use these for socks. I'm going to do... Uh, I haven't decided. Probably for me, I'm going to do heels and toes and then the body. And then for Emmy, I'll do the opposite. Heels and toes and the body. Or something like that. But some sweater maker. I love her yarn so much. And I got another sweater maker somewhere. There's so much of the stuff is just shoved in here. I hope I actually brought it all out because that would not be cool if I forgot half of it now. Here we go. This is another sweater maker. And Grace, I'm pretty sure we bought the same one. She doesn't do colorways, so I can't say for sure, but isn't it glorious? Look at that. That is real life. That isn't that isn't the sun doing weird things in the backyard. That's the real colors. Looks like a peacock. So I have no idea what I'm going to do with it, but isn't it pretty? Yeah. So that was my first little yarn fix. Mm. Sweater maker. I'm going to have piles of yarn in the snow. Whatever. I'll precariously perch it right, perch it right there so it hopefully doesn't land in it. Um, so yeah, that was my first purchase out there. And then Friday morning, um, Nicole took me down to Nanaimo to catch the ferry. And I took the ferry across to Vancouver. Um, and Elise picked me up. Elise from My Two Tips podcast. She picked me up and she even made me a sign because I, for some reason, was worried that I wouldn't recognize her. I don't know why I thought that, but I did. So she made a big sign that said, Jen. And then it had like 500 eyes at the end and then an exclamation point. I think there was an exclamation point in there too, but it was so unnecessary because I saw her before I was even out of the arrivals terminal. There's ice falling from my house, whatever. So yeah, I was going down the escalator and she was standing just outside the doors and she's waving and I'm waving and it was totally fine. So that was amazing. It just went so smoothly. I. The most stressful part of the entire trip went amazingly well. So everything just went, I, I couldn't believe it. I was just experiencing it and like stepping back and watching the whole trip happen in front of me. And I was just so amazed how everything was going so well. Everything was happening perfectly. I was meeting everyone I was supposed to meet. I was on time. It was just all magical. So whatever happy times so Elise and I went and got donuts because we had to get donuts obviously and then zooted over to Shannon's house Shannon of Socks Cetera yeah I got to go and sit on Shannon's patio in her house well at her house and there was a lot of other people there too there was probably I think there was 12 of us total and it was very it was a very weird feeling because I, well, I didn't know everyone, but I knew a lot of the people that were there. Um, but I was greeted by name. 
as soon as I walked up the sidewalk, everybody's, oh, hi, Jenny, hi, 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 and I'm, okay, I'm in this strange place and everyone knows me and it just was awesome. It just relaxed me completely and it was rad. We, I can't remember who all was there and I'm going to forget somebody, so I'm not going to say, but I met three, three people that I'd never, uh, it's not that I'd never heard of them before, but they, I finally got to see their face essentially because they either have audio podcasts or um, I just didn't know them well enough. So I got to, we had an amazing breakfast, Shannon and her friends made, well it wasn't really breakfast, I guess by the time we ate it was lunch, but it was awesome. So much food, good coffee, good juice, good everything, good company. Um, Shannon's friend Steve was there and we got I got to meet him which was really cool. He's an awesome guy uh, He has the what's it called? It takes balls to knit Blog, can you see my chin chattering? I'm getting cold Whatever I'll survive. I've been outside all day. I'll get over it um, Got to meet him and uh, he is a really cool guy. He knows a lot of stuff. I would go and find him and check him out. He's doing a lot of designs. I think he's about to, or just did, have a huge sweater collection release. So I'll see if I can find that and um, link somewhere for it. And yeah, it was just amazing to hang out with these people and actually be able to interact with them instead of just watching them on their podcast. That was really cool. And everybody was just so calm and down to earth. Marsha was there, of course. And Scylla, it was awesome to see them again. And it was just so amazing to walk up to all these people and be so included and so instantly loved, even though I didn't even know half of them. And I mean, the entire weekend was like that. It was just insanely uplifting. Insanely uplifting. Um, so after we had our amazing brunch at Shannon's house, I, Shannon, I am still disappointed that your dogs weren't there. But I'll get over it. It's fine. We went to the Sweet Georgia warehouse. We all piled in Marsha, Marsha, Marsha's truck. Where is my Sweet Georgia? It's not in here, is it? That's not it, that's not it. Yeah, it is, it's right in front of my face. Ha, <laughs> just kidding. We all piled into Marsha, Marsha, Marsha's truck and drove down to got redirected by Google to go a silly way, but we made it there anyway. Um, and this is the only thing that I found there that I loved, so it's the only thing I brought home. It's so weird that I would pick this color combo, right? It's so strange. It's totally strange. This is Sweet Georgia. Something, something, something. Superwash Worsted. 100% Merino, uh, 200 yards in the colorway bourbon and I'm gonna make this year's toque with it this season's toque with it and I need to get on that because all of my toques right now are driving me crazy other than my icebreakers one but all my handmade toques are driving me crazy I keep looking over there because I think Emmy and Grammy are gonna come home soon but oh yeah sawdust whatever <laughs> welcome to my life pretty nice right they had so many different colorways there that I enjoyed but um, I tried really hard this the entire weekend I was away I tried to only buy things that I was absolutely in love with I was calling it my love at first sight buys I'm gonna try not to have a coughing fit <coughs> so yeah I only came home with stuff that when I saw it I went <gasps> and then I would buy it if it was like oh that's pretty then it didn't come home so I did really well. So that's my sweet Georgia. One of Shannon's friends that was there, I think her name was Lisa, she bought her first sweater quantity of sweet Georgia, well, of anything. It was for her first sweater that she was going to make um, of sweet Georgia. So that was really exciting. And did Marsha get a sweater quantity? She got like 16 sweater quantities that weekend. I, Marsha, I still haven't watched your podcast. It just popped up on my phone yesterday that it's done. So. I'm gonna watch that tonight when Emmy's in bed. Isn't that pretty? Okay, I'll stop showing it to you now. So that was Sweet Georgia. Then what happened? 
we went to the atrium which was the hotel that everyone was staying in which is like across the street from where knit city is where my hair is bugging me because it's been in a hat um we went to the atrium and we dropped off a bunch of stuff in marcia's room because i had all my tree gear with me and all my like clothes and stuff with me so i dumped all my stuff in her hotel room and we laid on the couch for a while, or we laid on the beds for a while and just kind of decompressed for a bit and relaxed. And then we went down to a place down the street and got some food, got some drinks. Marsha bought shots for the whole table. Whatever. Marsha, you're amazing. Maybe I wasn't supposed to tell anybody that, but who cares? Whatever. We had a great time. Had some food. We all did some knitting. We swapped knitting projects. I worked on some of Shannon's socks. I worked on some of Marsha's socks. I worked on some of Elise's uh, sweater for her mom. I think that's what that was. And then Marsha worked on a little bit of my shawl. I can't remember. I don't think Shannon did, but we swapped knitting projects. That was really fun. Um, yeah, we just spent some good time together before we went to... Uh, see you sold a oh my God, she's, so good. she's amazing but first Lara texted me because it was time for Lara to come to Knit City she was done work and so she came to meet us she had some food too and I was just so happy when I went to meet her and I saw her walking down the street and she has this certain little swagger that she has like she's she is so tough she's a farm girl and she's just she's so tough but she's walking down the sidewalk and I was just Oh my god, I'm so excited to see you! I was just so pumped, so yeah, big hug, whatever. No tears, just a big smile of excitement and happiness. Um, yeah, we went and got some food um, with everybody else. Uh, it was a big table. There was, met some, uh, I'm not gonna remember their names now, bunch of people from Edmonton. Um, I know their Instagram handles, but I don't remember their names, it's so bad. Um, and then we went to see Isolde, Teague, her, her little talk in the evening and it was really, really good. It was about sizing actually, it's not what I thought it was going to be about, it was about realizing that knitting patterns are expanding and need to expand to um, include different sized people and not just big and small but like big shoulders, skinny waist, big hips like me. and. Um, just all different shapes and sizes and how patterns need to be more um, adjustable to you to make it obviously more custom fit so that you love your knits essentially. So she showed us a bunch of her new patterns that are on their way to the world and she had, it was insane. She had like 18 sizes or something like that. So it was uh, it was like nine different sizes and then there was the tall versions of that. So in total it was 18 different sizes it was insane um she was so witty and she's so i don't want to say adorable and cute are you kidding me battery right now are you kidding me i might have to pause and go get my charger um she was just wonderful to listen to witty smart smart as a whip um really enjoyable to listen to and I want to make one of her vests now because they're so cute. I used to wear sweater vests in high school. I was such a geek. I was a preppy, ridiculous kid. But I used to wear sweater vests in high school and when I was sitting there watching her, I thought, I need to bring back the sweater vests because I, and I'm always cold, so why not? Why not? Okay, so, a couple life-changing things that happened that night. Um, first most embarrassing one, was that uh, I fangirled huge over, <laughs> oh, I'm so embarrassed telling you this, over Susan B. Anderson. Um, I went to the bathroom, walking back to my seat and totally daydreaming, like looking around at all the people. I see Susan B. Anderson talking to the grocery girls and I lose my mind. Oh my God, there's Susan B. Anderson. Are you kidding me? I'm looking at Susan B. Anderson right now. I trip over a garbage can. <laughs> almost fall flat on my face. I did not. I caught myself because I am graceful. Not graceful. 
pretty much like waited until she was done talking to the grocery girls and then looked at her and went, oh my God, you're Susan B. Anderson. You have no idea who I am, but I love you. You are amazing. I love what you do for knitters. Um, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And then eventually when I stopped making a fool of myself, she looked at me and she said, I know who you are. You're Jenny from Lone March. And then I lost my mind. I lost it. I could not believe it. I'm like, what? Susan B. Anderson knows who I am? How does Susan B. Anderson know who I am? Then I started getting all like weird and self-conscious. And then she just smiled at me in her kind, kind smile and kind, calm voice and said, we all know each other. We're all people. And that was the end of it. And I gave her another big hug, gave her a high five. And it was the best time of my life. Yeah. So Tracy uh, and Jody, apparently I found girl and make a complete fool of, of me for everyone, not just you two, for everyone. I'm a ridiculous fan girl. It was ridiculous. Who else did I see that night? There was a couple, who else did I see? Susan B. Anderson was the biggest one that I made a complete fool of myself with. Grocery girls were there, but we're like, we're like best friends now. So I didn't fan girl over that. We're like best friends, whatever. Uh, Caitlin French was there, but we're best friends too. Not really at all. Um, but Lara is test knitting for Caitlin French's new pattern that's coming out. Uh, I cannot think of anyone else that was there. You saw the Teague was there. I didn't fangirl over her because I felt connected to her. Like she was, I don't know. I don't know. It was weird. I didn't freak out over her. I, yeah, I watched her from afar. Um, I can't remember anyone else. I had a massive headache that night, but I overcame it by eating all of the energy bars I could find, taking all of the Advil I could find, and then I was fine. Um, yeah, and then Lara and I went back to... Oh, that's a thing. I don't know if they're in here, though. Sweet Georgia gave us little sampler pack things. Yeah, they're right here. One of them's right here. Two of them's right here. Sweet Georgia sponsored the talk and they gave everybody that was there a little sampler oh here's the other one a little sampler pack of a bunch of their different bases how cool is that that was really fun um went back to carly's what did we do we sat on her deck we enjoyed each other's company I was so happy to be with my Knit City girls again. Those are my, Carly and Lara are my Knit City girls because that's that's how it started was going with them. So it was awesome. I was so relaxed and so comfortable and just so happy to be where I was with those people. So amazing day Friday. Um, I'm back. Whoa, careful. Okay, so Saturday. Saturday came around and uh, what time was it, Marsha? It was like 8.30 in the morning. I was still laying peacefully in my bed <laughs> and Marsha's texting me, where are you? I'm in line. Oh my God, are you coming soon? Where are you? Go where are you? <laughs> lying peacefully in my bed. I'm gonna go get a coffee and then we're gonna make breakfast. Lara and Carly and I didn't show up until, what time was it, 10? Maybe that morning? Cause morning time at Carly's house is just as important in the Knit City experience as actually being at Knit City. So we took our time and it was amazing. We had lovely bacon. What else do we have? All I remember is the bacon. <laughs> what else did we eat? Lara made eggs. That's all I remember. My memory is so bad. Anyway, we had a lovely relaxing morning and Marsha harassed me all morning. Are you coming to Knit City? Yes, I'm coming to Knit City, just slowly. So we eventually showed up. And that is when the chaos began. Um, I don't even know where to start. These are definitely not going to be in order, but I'm just going to start showing you stuff. And I don't know where the card is for this one, but Knit City is awesome. All I have to say is Knit City is awesome. And if you have the opportunity to go, go. Because it is so worth it, not only for the yarn, but for the people that you meet and for 
how eye-opening it is that the designers are normal people and the dyers are normal people and they want to know you just as much as you want to know them. So go. Public service announcement from Jenny. This is Bumble Birch. Isn't this gorgeous? If you saw my Instagram on Sunday morning, this was the cowl that I was wearing. It wasn't a cowl, it was yarn. Yeah. This is Bumble Birch. Isn't it amazing? Um, we... Is her name Sarah? I think her name was Sarah. We stood at her booth for a long time and talked to her because she is an amazing person and I really enjoyed her company. So that is my bumble birch. Can't tell you anything more about it because I don't know where the tag is, sorry. Other than the fact that it's beautiful and you should go look at all her yarn. Okay, um, bumble birch. And yes, it's just gonna touch my face, all my face. Um, what else happened that day? Black Cat Custom Yarn. I do have the tag for this one. Her name is Kim, I believe. This is Everyday Socks, Superwash Merino Wool. Nylon, 20 nylon. Um, Nyan is the name, N-Y-A-N. She had this color. This was a very popular color. She had it on all of her bases. There was a Stellina base. Uh, there was a worsted base, there was a DK base, and then just the normal everyday sock base as well. And this is one I came home with because I'm not a sparkly person. Isn't that amazing? It just reminds me of outer space. I don't know why, but maybe. Whatever. So that was Black Custom Yarns, Black Cat Custom Yarns, and actually, this is funny. Every, It's funny to me anyway. Every time I see, I follow her on Instagram, and every time I see her Instagram handle come up I always thought it was black cactus yarns or something because my brain's dumb and it sees things that aren't there bumble birch black cat custom yarn so gorgeous um, try not to miss anything okay went to see Alicia and her amazing family just bugging Rowan a little bit Got to talk to her husband, which was really cool. And her daughter is so funny. I've met her daughter many times at uh, different places, mostly at Old's Fiber Week. And I don't think she really recognizes me, but every time I see her, I like poke her in the side or I'll stick my tongue out at her or whatever. She just looks at me like, who is this crazy lady? Whatever, I'm gonna keep doing it because I think it's funny. So I look like my mom today. Hi mom. Hi dad. I still haven't worked on your socks. Sorry. Too much going on. I'm the worst daughter in the world. Whatever. Okay, so this is Yarn Ink. This is a Yarn Ink Mini. I'm a bad podcaster today. Isn't it great? So I got these to pair together because I'm going to make a little bird bird. Some socks, heels and toes, and obviously the body in those because Emmy likes purple, and that's a pretty amazing purple. So these are both yarn ink. Um, don't tell me, what, don't ask me what they are. Classic sock color is royal. And this one is sock mini 7525. And it is, uh, what did I just read? Jazz. I love her yarn so much. She did she nearly sold out. Alicia did. Alicia did. She did well. I hope she did well. It looked like she was doing really well. So, so proud of you guys. I don't know why I'm proud of you. Okay, so pause for a minute before we look at any more yarn. Uh, I have to say a huge thank you to everyone that came to talk to me while I was there. It was slightly overwhelming, but I think I handled it quite well. I don't think I offended anyone. I don't think I said anything too totally stupid. Um, there were a couple people that, oh, that's what I was gonna tell you about. There were a couple people that were really nervous to come up and talk to me, um, but they did. And I appreciate that because I am just a person. I am just a anxious, nervous person, just like you are, that freaks out when Susan B. Anderson knows who you are and looks like a complete idiot. 
So you can look like an idiot, I don't care. If anything, I'm gonna high five you and give you a big hug and say, yes, let's look like idiots together. So don't worry about it. Um, I got to meet Riv Creative. Um, she was totally watching me at the You Sold a, you sold a Teague thing on Friday night. And I saw her, but I couldn't figure out who she was. I couldn't, rec I couldn't place her. She was like watching me from across the room, but she was, she said she was too nervous to come over and talk to me. I just started laughing. I'm like, you're ridiculous. Don't you dare be intimidated by me. Never anyone be intimidated to come over and talk to me. That's silly. Um, yeah, but it was amazing. The amount of love and appreciation that I got, um, just from people giving me hugs, giving me high fives, I gave away a lot of buttons. Um, it was amazing. It made me feel really good and it gave me so much more motivation to keep doing this podcasting thing. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? And I don't know how many times I said that this, that weekend. Who would have thought that three years ago when little Lara and I got the idea in our head, you know, let's just go to Knit City. Like, let's go check it out. What is it going to be about? Who would have thought that three years later it would be this to me now? I had no idea and I don't know what else to say or where I'm really going with this but thank you every single person that came up to talk to me and for those that didn't I think I already said this for those that didn't send me a message if that's an easier way to connect with me then do that because I I appreciate your you being where you are and your um, support even if you didn't come up and say hi because I know that there were some of you that were too scared. Um, it was amazing. I met some really, really cool people. Um, and I'm sorry if I didn't say your name, but I can't remember everyone because there was a lot of people. I got some chocolates from somebody. Her name was Tracy. Kate and I ate them really fast. And they were really good. Thank you, Tracy. What else do I have to show you? Okay, I met Richard DeVries. I met him. He has amazing taste in footwear. I will insert a picture here to show you what I mean. I couldn't believe it. So we're pretty much best friends now. Yeah. But I have an even bigger crush on him than I did before. So I bought some minis from him. Because how can you not when they look like candy? Right? Yeah. So, Minnie's from Richard DeVries. He is amazing. He is so personable. So cute. He's not cute. I hate using that word. But he's just... So many people I saw this weekend are just so... Uh, I'm, I can't think of the word. So lovely and so... Like, draw, like they draw you in. You just want to be with them because they're so uplifting and so funny and so... I'm gonna say cute again, so I'm just gonna stop. Anyway, Richard DeVries. Such great shoes on. And then the next day, he wore hippie boots and uh, hand knit socks. Hippie boots, I mean Birkenstocks. I love him. The next day, no, not the next day, we're still on that day. Is that all I bought that day? That might be all I bought that day, actually. I did really well. I did connect up with Grace. Some of you may know her as Juniper Grace. She used to do a podcast. Um, but apparently there may be more Juniper Grace, Grace podcasts coming soon. We did a swap a while ago and then she had a kid like seven weeks ago. So she got a little distracted and didn't send me fiber like we had spoken of, but she brought me all the fiber and she vacuum packed it <laughs> so it was really easy to get home just bits and pieces and I think what I'm gonna do not with all of it obviously but with some of it I'm gonna make some thrummed mittens for the kiddo and probably for me honestly green the red because why not Angora yeah and more the red so yeah all the vacuum packed fiber thank you so much grace we spent a lot of time with grace and her tiny little human sarah 
She is very cute. I know it didn't make me want to have more babies. But she was still really cute and I gave her a cuddle. So we saw Grace. That was really cool. Grace was one of Grace we met the first year at Net City. Um she was really the first person that like well along with Shannon Cook and um Jean Richmond. Sorry, I'm getting tired. All all three of those ladies were like our first oh my goodness, these are real people and we can know them and we can be their friends and we can like we can be friends. So it was so awesome to reconnect with Grace. So good. Um, what else did I do? I think all that. I gotta stop looking in that box because that's something completely different. So the next day, what did we do Saturday night? Oh, we went to Granville. That's what we did. Um, by about three o'clock, I was so overwhelmed by people talking to me that I needed to get out of there. And I'm sure some of you can understand this. Um, I was just done. I needed I needed some quiet time. So uh, Carly and Lara and I went down to Granville and we just wandered around as you do at Granville, right? So Carly and Lara bought me a present. They bought me a Midori Traveler's Notebook or whatever it's actually called, I'm not really sure. And it's just a fancy planner. It's not just a fancy planner, it's a fancy planner. But you can buy these inserts for like, well, it depends on which kind of inserts, but you can buy these little books to put in it. You can have as many or different kinds as you want. You can buy like zipper bits so that you can, I don't know, keep things in there. There's like a notepad part at the back. There's my grocery list. And then there's a piece at the front. This is like my happiness page right here. Carly gave me this. Um, bookmark actually to give to Emmy and then I got greedy and kept it for myself but we gave Emmy a cheetah one so that was okay and then we took our yearly knit city picture and Lara has this amazing thing that prints tiny little Polaroids so she printed me a Polaroid and now every time I open my planner I see the three of us and it just brings joy to my heart so anyway we went down to Paper Ya which is at Granville and got me some inserts for the one for what I wanted for my planner. So now I have a fancy planner too. And I don't have to use my $11 one from Staples anymore. So now I feel so fancy. Isn't it pretty? It smells good. It's camel. Yeah, it smells good. So, Granville. What else do we do? Do we get food? No, because we got sushi on the way home. Which was so good. <coughs> what else did we do at Granville? We tried on some jewelry. We wandered around. Carly bought a painting. <laughs> or a print, I guess. It's silkscreen print. We just wandered and had quiet time and did what we wanted to do. And it was perfect. Oh, we went to, we went to Delish General Store. That's what we did. Is that what it's even called? Why can I not remember that? It sounds weird to me. That's what it's called, right? Delish General Store? And we met uh, the owner of said store and we had, yeah, Delish General Store. We had an amazing talk with her. I purchased a book. Shocking, right? Shocking. So I'm not going to do For the Love of Trees this week because I need to go get my child, essentially. <laughs> Um, but stay tuned because I've already started it and it's really good. But first I have to show you this because remember I went to a wedding two weekends ago, three weekends ago. Check this out. Is that not the most amazing picture you've ever seen? They had a photo booth, which essentially was just the photographer in front of a really well lit screen taking pictures and then they printed them out right there. Yeah. How amazing is that? And yes, I wore a t-shirt to the wedding. Whatever. That was amazing. So, then we had an amazing time at Carly's house on Saturday night. Got sushi, ate so much of it. Uh, 
just chatted, talked and enjoyed each other's company because it only happens once a year. So we just soaked it all in. <laughs> the next morning we got up, Kate, <laughs> Kate was at Knit City at 8.30 in the morning. I was still in bed at 8.30 in the morning. But that was good because she had her time to do her solo shopping and I had time to wake up. Um, but I walked in eventually when we finally got there and just started yelling her name and got looked at like I was a crazy person, but I don't care. I just started walking through the aisles yelling, Kate, <laughs> Kate, and then she appeared and it was reunited and it feels so good. Yes! I gave her like 14 hugs and she didn't buy anything yet. She hadn't bought anything yet because she was waiting for me, which is a good thing, sort of. But we went around to a couple different places. I got sidetracked and did a periscope with the uh, grocery girls and um, we just wandered around for a while. And then I kept bugging Kate to show me what she had found, show me what she had found. And she's like, well, I kind of like this one and I kind of like this one. And then we went to this booth that I'm not gonna remember the name of, but she pulled this one out and she's like, I really like this one. I don't have it obviously because it's Kate's, but I like this one, but why is it at the front? Why, why does it, why is it back at the front? I hid it. I hid it behind all these other skeins. And I was like, what? You hid it? She's like, yeah, I didn't want anybody else to get it. And I went, okay, so clearly you really like this yarn, right? She's like, well, yeah, it's kind of nice. And then I'm such a bad storyteller. And then she's, and I said, okay, well, Kate, I'm buying it for you because you obviously love it. She's like, well, I don't know if I really love it. And I looked her in the eyes and I said, Kate, you hid it. You hid the yarn away from other people. Clearly you love it. So I bought it for her. That made me smile. So anyway, that was funny. And then Kate made me buy this yarn. She didn't really make me buy it. She just showed it to me and I went, oh, oh, because I made that face, I brought it home. I found this at, um, use your brain, Jenny, Clenda and Bernadette, Wet Coast Wools, buttons right there staring at me. That was another thing. Both of them didn't think that I knew who, no, didn't think that I knew who they were. They came up to me all sheepishly on that Friday night and said, I just wanted to say hi, you have no idea who I am. And I looked at them and I said, are you crazy? Of course I know who you guys are. You're blah, blah, blah. And then we had a lovely chat and now we're best friends. Whatever, we're best friends. So anyway, I bought this and it's so soft. And I just wanna knit all the things that I bought, like all of them. I'm not gonna even attempt to pronounce this. This is what it is. I'm gonna try not to shake when I show you. It is. Oh, he was needy a second ago, and now he's gonna walk away. Yeah, here we go. So I'm talking to someone other than him. You gonna sit down? You gonna sit down? Are you gonna pause? Slow. Slow? Yeah, slow. No? You're just gonna sit there and look at me? Okay. So, my phone ran out of space. It's five o'clock, I had to go get the child, so it is now close to bedtime. And I'm back. I believe I was about here. I was showing you this glorious yarn. And it is called this. I'm not going to try and pronounce it, as I said before. Um, it's gloriously soft. It is 56% mulberry silk, 40% baby alpaca, and 4% merino. 100% gorgeous. Did I really just say that? <laughs> And it's chain plied. I can't remember if I said that before or after it died last time. But it's chain plied and it's so soft and it's so squishy. And um, Bernadette and Glenda, thank you for tempting me with it because I'm really glad I brought it home. So I'm going to make uh, Caitlin French is Caitlin French's shrug that they had as a sample knit. And I can't remember what that pattern is right now, but you'll see it soon. Do you want to feel it, Beagle? Do you feel the mulberry silk? Oh, it's so soft. It's 
almost as soft as your ears, but not quite. So there's that. Oh, I'm gonna put it right there and you look, it'll feel like you're being hugged in it. Can you tell I'm tired? Okay, so that was on Sunday. What else did I forget to show you? If I showed you my needy beagle, here he is. I showed you that. Okay, so yes, right. Um, we did that. Really? You're too much. Um, you get to hear a beagle whine. Aren't you lucky? You're so lucky. So after we were done at Mint City, we went to lunch with Kate and Carly and Lara and I. We went for lunch. And then um, we went back to Carly's house and had crafternoon and just cuddled our yarn and talked about what we were going to make with it and talked about knitting and got Carly going on a lacy back kiss. And Kate was really excited because Kate knew how to, knew what we were talking about when we were trying to explain it to Carly instead of feeling like she's always in the dark. Kate was the one explaining stuff, so that was pretty awesome. <laughs> she was really pumped. Rightfully so. You are too much. And then, what else do we do, Beagle? You weren't there, you wouldn't know. Um, we got sushi again, because it's so good. And then Kate and I drove home. We said our goodbyes to Lara and to Carly. Um, I shed a tear, and because I adore you two. And then we went to Kate's house, and we got there pretty late, so I, what did we do? Kids just went to bed, and so we sat down and started knitting. Shocking, I know. And then I just got to hang out with Kate and help her as much as I could. And what else did I do there? Tuesday, Monday? Monday I just helped her do house stuff, took Lanny to school and all of that boring fun stuff. You know what I mean, boring but fun stuff when it's not your household. Um, I'm probably forgetting something super fun and important, but I can't remember. Tuesday we had all to ourselves, so Kate and I went to Valley Yarns, as we do every time, as you all should, because Valley Yarns is awesome. And uh, we met Marnie of Crazy About Knitting, not of Crazy About Knitting, she is Crazy about, about Knitting on Instagram. I'm sure many of you know her. She is fantastic. And we met her at the subway because Kate and I were starving. So we went to get food across the street and then uh, we had a lovely little chat there. Um, she, and what, sh what I was going to show you with that, you are out of control, is Marnie brought some yarn for me to give away. I was gonna give one of these to Kate and I totally forgot to give away to do whatever I decide to do with them. I'm sorry the lighting's so bad, but it's late. So I'm gonna show you that now if this needy beagle will get off my lap. Can you please get off my lap? Please, you don't need to be touching humans every second of your life. He's extra needy because I abandoned him. Right? Did you get abandoned? Okay, seriously, get off me. Thanks, sit. Good boy. You can sit right there and not on top of me. So Marnie gave me three skeins of, I think these are all Space Cadet yarn, is that right? Yeah, Space Cadet yarn, ones that she got uh, in the Yarn of the Month Club, um, but ones that she knew that she wasn't going to ever use, so she decided to give them to somebody that would. And uh, so I'm going to give two of them away. Well, I'll just show them to you first. This is the first one. Purple, turquoises, greens. This is the one I'm going to keep because I love it. And it's gorgeous. So this one is something. It's called Dark Gems. I have dog hair in my mouth. 100% superwash merino. Did I tell you what the... Worsted. Yeah, it's worsted. So I'm going to keep that one. Thank you, Marnie. I appreciate you thinking about me. And I really loved your note. And you're a superstar too. So you are. 
and we all love you, we really do. And then these are the two that I'm going to throw into the prize uh, bag or whatever. The prizes for the Knitsy Hangover Cal, which I should probably talk about right now. This one is Crescent, Cress, Crescita. It's a uh, worsted weight, 100% superwash merino. And then this one is Capella, which is single ply worsted, 100% superwash again, in the colorway Renegade. This one's awesome. It's pretty accurate, actually. It's maybe not quite so intense as that, but. So these are gonna be part of the prizes for the Knit City Hangover Cal. And I will talk about that right now because I'm thinking about it. Um, there is a Knit City Hangover Cal that is going on right now. And you, all you have to do to participate is knit anything that you want, but it has to be using yarn that you either purchased at Knit City or at a yarn knitting whatever festival of some kind at some point in your life. Um, obviously everybody didn't get to Knit City, so really buddy, really? So it doesn't have to be specifically Knit City, but it does, it, it does need to be from a festival or whatever, some sort of knitting get together that you really, really, is everyone here to see you? Okay, kind of. Seriously. Move. Um, and that is going on right now to get over your Knit City hangover because I'm feeling the Knit City hangover really, really strongly. Still, I've been home for uh, a week. Tomorrow it'll be a week and I'm breathing through it. Honestly, real life is awesome. It's good, but it kind of sucks after going away on such a good trip. So it's going on from now until the end of November and I will open up a thread in the Ravelry group which is Lone Larch podcast Ravelry group and you can we'll just do a chatter and then a prize thread but uh, let's do an FO thread and a chatter yeah. thread you can talk about what you bought what your favorite yarn is that you bought honestly all of mine is my favorite yarn but whatever so after we went to after we met Marnie we went across the street to Valley Yarns and Jasmine greeted me by name. I think that's your name. I really hope that's your name. Um, she's just amazing. She was there last time I was at Valley Yarns, and she's just amazing and gorgeous and so kind and fun to talk to. So when I was there, I bought Kate some yarn because everybody needs yarn bought for them, right? And I decided to buy myself, finally, my very first Madeline Tosh. Okay, Jasmine was very upset that I had never knit with Madeline Tosh before. I'm sorry, but I haven't, uh, and I will shortly. I have no idea what I'll make. I might just make like a, is this a DK? Yeah, it is a DK. I might just make a, uh, like a sock head, but not a sock head because it's not fingering weight, but just simple rib and then floppy toque. We'll see. But isn't it pretty? Uh, what is the colorway again? Mad Tosh DK yarn. Found pottery is the colorway. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I can't wait to knit it up because it looks like confetti or something. Like angel food cake. I love it. So that, I think, is my last yarn purchase of the chip. Yes, it's definitely the last yarn purchase of my trip. Uh... What else did we do that day? Oh, we went and frolicked in the forest, which was awesome. I love me a good forest, obviously. Kate got a little bit tired of me taking all the pictures and all the videos, but whatever, it was all for you guys. And Kate, you're gonna love them because you get to see them and why I was taking them and how magical the forest truly is. Whatever, Kate, if you like trees. But she actually does. Okay, I'm tired and I should probably stop podcasting now because I'm going a bit crazy. But first, I'm going to show you a couple of things because I really want to tell these people how much I appreciate them. Uh, I feel a little bit weird showing you stuff that I got in the mail because it kind of feels like I'm bragging, but 
I decided that it's more important to show my appreciation than worry about other stuff. So when I got home from over there, the West Coast, don't you dare start stealing yarn. Okay, whiskey's here. Come here, you little troublemaker. And look how big he is. He's massive. Look at him. He's like a real cat now. He's not even a kitten anymore. He's just a kitten because he steals my yarn. Don't steal my yarn. I tried giving him his own yarn. No, he just still found my yarn and ruined my yarn. So, Okay, so when I got home from Knit City, sorry, I was just thinking about leaving Kate's house. and Oh, oh that's what happened. Okay, so hold on. Uh, Kate dropped me off at the airport, and when she drops me off at the airport, she just sort of like drops my bags, kicks me out of the van, and then drives away as fast as she can so that we don't both start crying our eyes out, the fact that we have to leave each other again. So I really like this tactic because it works really well. I just kind of get to give her a high five, a big squeeze, and then we carry on with our lives, right? Without having that whole emotional breakdown because let's face it, it happens. Um, but uh, when I went in to the airport, I got food because I was hungry and I sat down and I was getting up to get something like a, oh, I went to get napkins because it it was pulled pork and it was really good, but it was messy. So I went up to get napkins and on my way back to my table, there was a lovely lady sitting there wearing a hand knit shawl. And I obviously saw it and went, okay, here we go. Here's the knitter. So I sat down and I said, did you make a shawl? She said, yes, I did. Thank you for noticing. And she said, and I said, oh, I'm a knitter too. I just wanted to show you how I don't know. I, what did I say? I just want to tell you how nice it looks or whatever. I can't remember what I said. A terrible memory, whatever. Um, and she said, oh, thanks. I've just started knitting about a year ago and um, I'm really enjoying it. And, uh, I'm not a very good knitter and I'm looking at this. I'm like, uh, you're a good knitter. If you're making a shawl that looks like that, you're a good knitter. So I said, were you at Knit City? Because that's one of the reasons that I'm here is I was at Knit City and she said yes and her eyes lit up and she got all excited and so her name was Christine and we had a lovely chat and it turns out that she knows Kim who is I'm not gonna remember your name right now let's see if it's gonna pop out again to my ginger snap one yes I did it um they have like a virtual knit group and she is part of it as well, so she knows Kim, Ginger Snap, who I met at Knit City for the first time, which was awesome. Um, and then we started chatting some more about stuff, and uh, her daughter is good friends with Caitlin French, and everybody knows everybody, essentially. And so we sat and chatted, and then we went through security and sat and chatted some more while we waited for the plane to come. And okay, she gave me a little tidbit of information and I'm going to start the rumor. It may be a rumor, but the way she was talking about it, it's maybe a thing. Still totally indecisive and can't give you a real answer. But I'm just going to say, Stephen West has been in invited to Knit City 2017. And it's a pretty good chance that he's coming. Feel free to lose your mind now. Because I certainly did. So, because he is one of the people on my list that I need to just check off, that I have met him and felt his presence and gave him a high five, essentially. So, stay tuned for how I completely lose my mind and fangirl over Stephen West next year at Knit City. Please tell all of your friends that Stephen West will be at Knit City 2017. I'm just going to keep saying it over and over and over again, then maybe it will happen. You're crazy. So, yeah, she told me that, and I went... A little bit crazy um, very exciting so we exchanged Instagram handles and all sorts of things and so now we're best friends too right <laughs> not really but another person that is just so connected in my world that it's awesome so you're probably wondering why there's an empty chair right here and why I'm not sitting in it there was a Fraxy cat sitting there a minute ago she bolted as soon as I sat down here started recording now she's sitting over there so that's why why don't you sit in that chair instead of staring at me maybe not 
Okay, so back to the real world. Um, I got home from Knit City and I looked at my mailbox and there were three packages waiting for me, which kind of made me lose my mind a little bit. One of the packages was from Robin, Robin's Roost Yarn. She very generously sent me two skeins of yarn, one for me and one to give away um, for the Knit City Hangover Cow. And this one is going to be, oh look at that, sparkle sparkle. Wow that's pretty good. That's my daytime light that's blaring in my face but it's the only way that I could get enough light so that you could actually see what was going on in here. So this is the skein that I'm going to give away for the giveaway for the <laughs> prize for the cow. It is her fingering sock with Stellina colorway Nebula. Um, 70, 25, 5, 70 superwash merino, 25 nylon and 5 Stellina. And it's fingering weight 460 yards. So her Etsy shop is the Rob Robin's Roost Shop on Etsy. Oh yeah, I wrote Robin on there. Okay, so I wrote Robin on the card so that I wouldn't forget what Robin's name was because apparently I think I am that ridiculous that I couldn't remember the name of Robin's store, Robin's Roost. Sometimes. So yeah, that is her, her skein to give away to you guys. And this is the one that she sent for me. This one has Delina in it as well, which I'm fine with. It is called Stormy Night. Storm Stormy Sky. And it's the same base. Fingering sock with Delina. 70.25.5. And look at how pretty it is. Um, you have great colorways, Robin. I quite enjoy your yarn. So go check her out and Robin, thank you so much. So generous of you and I appreciate it so much. Thank you. So those two were in the mail. Oh, she sent me some stitch markers too, which I think I'm going to put in one of the packages as well because I have a gazillion stitch markers. They're just the um, round ones with the closed bead inside of it. Mm -hmm. So there's um, snaggles and really cool. So, Watson's back. Did you notice? The other package, one of the other packages that was in my mailbox was a package from Jody of the Grocery Girls. Jody s let me know that she was sending me something before I left for Knit City. I think a, oh, just over a week before I left. But it did not come in time for me to get it beforehand. And I am so very flattered, Jody, that you sent this to me. We, if you watched the podcast where both, where all of us were at my mother-in-law's house, where we did that little podcast, the bee splat yarn came up. Yeah. She sent me a skein of it. Yeah. It's amazing. We sort of were chatting like in passing, kind of a side conversation. Oh, that's really nice yarn. Do you want one? Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool if we could get another one. She said, oh yeah, I'll send it to you. Never thinking that she actually would. I don't know. You just, you forget things like that. Jody did not forget. Jody sent me the yarn. It's Vivid Yarns, which is in Calgary. B splat, 80-20, high twist fingering. Can't wait. Can you see my beagle right now? It's it's because I abandoned him for a week and then I've been working and now he does this. She not only sent me the yarn, she sent me one of the bee splat bags. Yeah. Pumped. Pumped, Jody. So pumped. And I don't think I expressed that enough in the like one sentence message I just sent you on Instagram, but I appreciate it so much. Awesome. It warms my heart. I'm going to say it again, Knit City for me is not all about buying the yarn. It is awesome that I am in close, such close proximity to so much beautiful yarn and that I can buy it, but it was all of the people that I got to interact with. It was all of those, all of the viewers that came up and said hi to me, gave me a high five, asked for a button. It was, 
it just made me feel so good. It was so uplifting and honestly, that's exactly what I needed at exactly the right time it happened. And I appreciate you guys so much, period. So that was that package. Oh good, it is in here, I didn't think I... By the way, Stephanie sent me Stephanie sent me a hat. I don't know if you guys know who I'm talking about, but Stephanie does. So, thank you, Stephanie. And all of the Icelandic licorice is in my belly. And, what else? Weagle? Oh, I started reading the book too, and I'm not very far into it, because I left it at home when I was away, so. But, enjoying it thoroughly. That was a while ago. So, the third package that was at home, when I got home was from Gia. I don't know how to say your name. Is it G-A-E or G-E-A? I can't remember, but there was a package from her. Um, she bought a bag for me a while ago, stole the address, and sent me a package back, which was so awesome. It made my day. The fact that it came all the way from the Netherlands, made my day. So she sent me some minis. My throat's tired. She sent me some minis. Oh, I told Emmy that these are called unicorn tails by some people, and she lost her mind. Her mind blew out of her body. It was so funny. So yeah, she sent me some huge minis. And she sent me, I love this yellow one. I showed them to Kathy, and Kathy was like, oh, I don't really like the yellow one, I like the other ones. The yellow one's my favorite. Which is weird, because I don't like yellow. She sent me those minis, and she sent me two bags of Dutch licorice, which made me smile so hard. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to eat these ones, because these ones are like, these are the exact ones that my dad got growing up, or that my dad bought when I was growing up for like Christmas, Dutch Christmas and stuff. So I'm keeping these ones and I'm gonna send these ones to my dad because he will love it. It will, he will smile so hard. So thank you so much for that package. I can't, I, I feel so, I feel like I cannot express how thankful I am to you guys. And your note too, Gio, was awesome. And please tell me how to say your name because I feel like I'm butchering it so bad. Your note was spot on and I appreciate it. Um, totally lost my train. <laughs> Whatever. I'm tired. It's late. It's not really late, but it's past podcasting bedtime. So yeah, I'm just going to show you these one more time because aren't they nice? Oh, they're so squishy. My lips are burnt from the wind. Okay, Beagle. You over it? So, moral of the story is, start your Knit City Hangover Cal right now. Go grab your favorite skein of yarn or enter whatever you, whatever you cast on Saturday night, the night Knit City happened, because um, that's exactly what I did with Mud Punch. Uh, start working on that and it, post in the threads and let's get some chatter going and I promise I'll try to be better with the Ravelry business. Um, that's pretty much the moral of the story. The other moral of the story is, if you get a beagle, be prepared for this. The good and the bad of it. You have great ears. Should we do kangaroo? I always do this to Watson, and, uh, Winnie did it better. He always flips his head around. Kangaroo beagle! Emmy thinks that's hilarious. Okay, seriously, you're driving me crazy. So yeah, that's the moral of the story. The other moral of the story is go frolic in a forest. Um, have fun and go join a virtual knit night near you if you don't have one near you. Um, and that's it.